In this episode, we talk about why you should start an engineering blog and how it can change your life, change your future forever. What's up everyone, this is Jake Voorhees and you are watching episode 14 of the 1% Engineer Show. We're now on part 8 of our top 10 job hunting tips for engineers. By the way, this goofy setup is the house where I grew up. This is temporary. I just moved back from Canada and pretty soon there'll be some bookshelf behind me or something. Like the old set. But no couch. I think the couch is gone forever. Fireplace. Maybe it's an upgrade. It may seem like a strange concept for you because for most engineers, at one point you could barely write. Or like when I was in college, maybe you can't write today either. But it's true, I'm trying to get you to start an engineering blog today, tonight, tomorrow, this weekend. And I'm going to teach you how to leverage it for career success. Before you go any further, if you haven't seen episode 12 about informational interviews, this episode goes with that. So go back and watch it right now. It's really important for this. So once you have your blog set up, and there's plenty of free resources for that, you're gonna start writing about your take on whatever niche you like, whatever your favorite thing in engineering is, because that's the field you're gonna be targeting for jobs, and you wanna be discussing that topic. Whatever your passion is, should be your favorite stuff. No, 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 it has to be engineering. That's the point of this. And if you can't get excited about anything in engineering, go watch episode 13, I'm sure you will. And if you still can't get excited, you probably need to change majors because there's plenty of cool stuff in engineering. And if it's just not for you, it's just not for you. For example, if you're a structural engineer, you like BIM, and you know about it, that's what you should be talking about. If you like the environment, choose that topic. If you like space, choose that topic. If you like robotics, AI, nanotechnology, drones, whatever, great. Talk about that for a couple months on your blog. And once the blog is rolling, you have some credibility built up there, Boom! You can start networking. It's such an easy ask for any professor, any industry professional. If you approach them and say, hey, I have this blog that I'm writing about your field. I'd love to interview you. I'd love to talk about your company, your organization, your group, whatever that person is doing. You can provide them exposure. You can provide them value. So it's an easy, easy way to network. This is the point of the blog. And you wanna know what really hooks people and get some ego involved and say, wow, you've inspired me so much with whatever you're doing. I would love to talk about you with my audience. And it makes them feel good because they're inspiring this young person. They get to talk about what they love. They get to gain exposure to their research group, whatever. So it's just a good combination of things that you can do for them to accomplish your goals, which is to network with this person. And you're gonna be able to do this with five, 10, 15, as many people as you want throughout your student career. And you can maintain these relationships. You can keep in touch. You can email them every once in a while, every couple months. Keep it going, keep that conversation going. And then again, just like many episodes in the show, later on when you need something, job, connection, some sort of opportunity, you can ask them for help now. And because they know you, because you've helped them in the past, you've built a relationship, they want to help you. This is finally the ask. It's easy now. They will be much more willing to connect you to future opportunities in their Rolodex. Maybe their company, they have a job, maybe they have another division that could use you, or anything at all. This is the point of networking, that you're connected, you help people, you know people, and you can provide each other with opportunities when people are in need. And they only do that to people they know. You have a relationship with them. You wrote a little blog article about them, and in a year's time, you kept in touch, maintained that relationship, maybe even you drop by again to see them, and it will prove fruitful for you in the end. Trust me, do it, start a blog. And for the three of you that do, message me and tell me that you did it, and I'll share your blog. We'll share it to the 1% engineers. And I'll soon be sharing stories of engineers who have done this and changed their careers. I have several people that I've been chatting with who inspire me with this project, the 1% Engineer Society. And what's nice about this today is that it can be done for free. Blog is free, your time is free. And if you build up enough content, you build up enough momentum, you can change your life. You can meet people who you would have never ever met before. And this is how you can leverage that blog to change your career. Getting back to the long lost question of the day, when you actually start your blog, what topic will you write about? Stay tuned for episode 15, where we go to part nine of our top 10 job hunting tips for engineers. Thanks for watching the 1% Engineer Show, guys, and stay hungry on your quest to become a 1% engineer. Cheers.